very very cheerful morning to all my dear students i hope you all are ready for your english class before starting the class i would like to appreciate few students those who are giving wonderful response in online classes kanishka love kosh tejas sonali yashika rana vedahi i am very happy that these students not only attend the class but they listen to the lecture delivered by teacher very carefully and attentively diksha also so you all are attending your class in a very disciplined way this is called the students of saint kabir public school and we are proud of you so don't disappoint us i give respect to all the teachers the way you are giving respect to your parents and the same we are teaching you through online classes as well as in the school also we taught you to give respect to everyone once again i would like to appreciate you all and i want other students also those who are not attending the online class i request you to please attend the classes through online classes you are able to clear your doubts with your teachers this is like we taught you in the school you are free to clear your doubts in the online class wherever you have a doubt please ask and those who are not attending the online classes those who are not taking these classes seriously it's a request to please join the class regularly it's for your benefit it's not we are wasting your time it's what we are trying to inculcating the concept in your mind so let's start today's class today we are going to start chapter number 11 chhasi ki rani take out your english literature books page number 74 chhasi ki rani you all know chhasi ki rani she was known as manu or mani karnika and through this chapter we are going to study we are going to learn about her childhood days how exactly she was during her childhood what she thought of how did she became a brave girl as she fought for our country she also wanted our country to be free from british rule she was totally against british rule from her childhood days this is what we are going to study in this play now characters in this play are manu manu is the nickname of jhansi ki rani she was called as jhansi ki rani because she married to the prince of jhansi whose name was gangadhar rao so manu is the daughter of moropant nana was the son of peshwa Tatya was the army chief and Sundari was Manu's friend. So Moropant was a renowned Maharashtrian pandit in Banaras which is in Varanasi. After the death of his wife he migrated he shifted to Peshwa house in Bithor along with his only daughter Manu. Now let's read scene 1 scene 1 took place in the garden where manu is playing the part of a queen manu in a guise of queen in a pride of queen she ordered zorava bring me my dagger my shield and armor i cannot help shattering the pride of these firangis they must be taught a lesson so you can see from the childhood she was against british rule firangis here referred to britishers english people 
so she uh, she ordered zorava that bring me my dagger dagger is a short knife shield is a round shield which we used for fighting in a battle and armor what do you mean by armor is a metal covering that we wore to protect our body in battle she ordered zorava to get his dagger shield and armor and she said i don't want to increase the pride of these firangis in our country and i cannot help shattering the pride of these firangis they must be taught a lesson she wanted to teach him a lesson and because of that she was totally against british rule in india so she ordered zorava to get his to get her dagger shield and armor as she warned them as she warned the britishers to be out of the country zorava said i am at your service your highness manu then talked to tatya who was the army chief she said mr general the time has come to demonstrate our might i want to witness your skill as a swordsman crush these white ants trying to grab our country get your forces ready then she talked to tatya and she said now mr general the time has come to show our power to these britishers i would like to see your bravery as a swordsman get your forces ready as these white ants white ants here refer to english people or you can say britishers she said get your forces ready and crush these britishers grab them and remove them from our country tatya said as you wish then manu talked to her friend sundri i feel like taking up arms against these white invaders from across the oceans they are scattered in our country like locust i learn they have an evil eye on every state so then manu talked to sundri sundri was manu's friend she said i to feel like that i want to raise my arms against these white invaders again white invaders are english people or britishers she wanted them to be removed from india as she has sensed that they have an evil eye on each and every state of country they wanted to britishers they want to rule over india and she was totally against it and because of that she said i want to raise my arms against these britishers as they are scattered in our country like a locust locust is a type of grasshopper which damage the vegetation similarly that's why she compared the britishers as locust because their intention is not good for the india their intention is not good for our country their intention was to rule over rule over india and that manu is very upset with this and because of that she was totally against british rule over india listening to her sundri said but we are helpless how can we on our own push them into the seas anyway you forget about it nana the prince is not in sight today his her friend said we are helpless how can we remove them from our country on our own so you just forget about it and tell me where is nana he is not looking today manu with a fake dislike for nana as she dislike nana she said you call him a prince 
you call him a prince he must have gone out to shoot birds or be sitting in his cob like a hen let me tease him today who claims himself to be a dead shot so manu said you call him a prince do you think he is a prince maybe he has gone he had gone out for shooting the birds or maybe he was sitting in his coop like a hen coop is the hen of uh, coop is the house of a hen so he, uh, she meant to say that maybe he was sitting in his room like a hen uh, like a hen was sitting in his house okay so she said let me tease him today i would like to tease him today tease means to taunt him that who claimed himself to be a dead shot now what do you mean by dead shot the person who claimed that he was a perfect uh, perfect shooter okay right so he manu uh, my, uh, nana claimed himself as a perfect shooter so she said let me tease him today who claims to be a dead shot sundri said well said shabili well said shabili nana boast of killing two birds with one shot yes sundri agreed with the manu and said you well said let him tease today because he claims that he can shoot two birds with one shot okay he was very uh you can say uh fond of uh, uh, uh saying extra words which he was not capable of and because of that manu uh, was uh, t- manu was thinking to tease him as as nana claimed himself to be a dead shot that he as he was a perfect shooter now manu said a poor marksman poor marksman means every time his shot got failed he was not able to shot the uh, shot a single bird so he according to her he was a poor marksman i outshone him today in a gun shooting contest i outshone him what do you mean by outshone shine more brightly than so she said i outshone him today she she failed him today in gun shooting contest she lose the match uh, sorry nana lost the match between manu and himself as she won in as she got victory in gun shooting contest that's why she said he was a poor marksman he was a poor dead shotter who was not able to shot clear sundri said very true you also sundri said very true you also outfaced all the competitors in horse race nana steed had run a muck and he fell off the horse back you put him on a on your horse and no road back home so first of all let me tell you the meaning of difficult words outfaced means to defeat someone to defeat someone steed is a horse here horse available for riding and amak means behave uncontrollably so what happened sundri said very true you defeated him in all the competitions uh you also defeated nana in horse race you remember nana's horse got uncontrollable and he fell off the horse and you put him on your horse and rode back home listening to her manu was re- remembered something else and she said sundri i just forgot to see my papa i just forgot to see my papa means she forgot to meet her father and don't know why he has sent for me now why he has sent for me let's see what her, what her father has sent had sent for her in scene 2 what she was uh, saying that what her father sent for her, her. scene 2 take 
play took place in a well furnished room in the palace peshwa and veer peshwa and moropant are talking and as then manu enters there manu said papa you sent for me moropant said yes my darling you have been playing games all day have you learnt your lessons so manu said no papa so manu said no papa i won't read such lessons they set my blood boiling singing the praises of the englishmen all the time relating their success story how the whites captured this fort or grabbed that state and merged it in their own territory all humbug so she won't don't want to read the lessons related to the white people english people there in those praises of britishers had been done in those books the Brit- british appreciation had been done and also it relates to their success story how they captured the fort and grabbed that particular state and merged into their own territory and according to her all was humbug humbug is a false behavior or false talk so she don't want to read those lessons where a pre- british appreciation had been done listening to her peshwa said no no you need not to bother about these political happenings you simply enrich your mind with knowledge after all you are cut out for the role of a queen listening to her peshwa said please don't involve in these political happenings you enrich yourself with the knowledge after all you have to play the role of a queen in future listening to peshwa Manu got sad and she said she had no interest in accepting as a queen the overlordship of the white man isn't it true that the white masters have enslaved many rulers and they rule by proxy the real rulers and their spouses are titular heads only so she said she had no interest to be the queen of the white man she don't want to be the queen of a white man or you can say she don't want to get married to the english people right and she said isn't it true they enslaved they here stands for britishers britishers they enslaved britishers enslaved many kings many rulers enslaved means they are forced to work under britishers they are forced to follow the orders of britishers and she also said that the real rulers and their wives are titular heads only titular means someone who is having the power who is having the official pa- official name as a king or queen but they don't have the real powers they don't have the real powers to rule over it, over its state so they are the titular heads only they are the king and they are the kings only for name they are not having the real responsibility for their state peshwa said shabili you are talking politics who taught you all this moropan said dear daughter the british are ruling over half the earth the sun never sets on their empire now listening to manu peshwa and moropant they got astonished they got surprised and peshwa asked her who taught you all this you are talking about politics and moropant said dear daughter they are ruling over half of the earth and their sun will never set means they are not going to nobody is going to defeat them they are going to rule over half of the earth and their sun will never set of their empire manu said but their sun shall set in our country they have to quit bharat but she was so determined and in a firm tone she said that if their sun will not set in their empire their sun will set uh, sh- set in our country their sun will sh- set in our country what does it indicate that they are soon going to leave our country they have to quit our bharat 
they have to free our india moropan said all right go and play with nana just then nana arrives and moropan said okay all right whatever you are saying saying it's true just for the time being you go out and play with nana nana said nana was the son of peshwa manu let's go out for a shooting practice manu said i don't mind provided you let me sit on the back of a elephant and why did you let me why didn't you let me sit with you yesterday so when uh, nana said to manu let's go for a shooting practice manu told him that i don't mind but you have to allow me to sit on the back of elephant and why didn't you allow me to sit on the back of elephant yesterday nana said arrogantly that's my wish and discretion discretion what do you mean by discretion right of someone to make choices so according to nana he said that's my wish and my choice even today you have to follow me on foot only prince and princess ride an elephant not a common girl like you so the nana said only the prince and princess they will take a ride on an elephant and you are a common girl you can't ride on a elephant manu said well in that case let me tell you i shall definitely ride an elephant one day so she got excited listening to umna nana and she said well if you say only prince and princess will take ride on the elephant i will definitely assure you that one day i will take a ride on elephant nana said but you don't have any you are crying for the moon aren't you nana said but you don't have you can't you can't take a ride on elephant because you are crying for the moon aren't you manu said i swear i shall have right only when i become worthy of that honor and privilege so she said okay i swear i promise you that i will take the ride on and the back of elephant only when i become worthy of it when i'll get the honor and privilege only then i will take the ride on the back of elephant listening to the conversation rajguru talked to himself and he said what a brave little lady you shall own a herd of majestic elephants one day when you are marry a prince my blessings are with you when she heard the manu that she promised to nana that one day she will ride when she become worthy of it and she uh, became worthy of it he talked to himself that what a brave girl it is she will definitely take ride on elephant and she will marry a prince my blessings are with you moropant curiously asked him who may you be sir who what brings you here rajguru said i am the rajguru of jhansi state and i came this way to search of a talented match for the maharaja actually he was the rajguru of jhansi state and he was in a search of a perfect match for the maharaja moropan said eagerly have you spotted that lucky girl have you seen that lucky girl rajguru said joyfully yes maharaj i have discovered not mere a princess i have discovered that girl and she is not only a princess alone but she was a little goddess and that lucky girl is your manu moropant disbelieving his ears he got surprised and he got shocked you mean manu rajguru said yes moropant your daughter is a bright star she is gifted girl she is a gifted girl worthy of becoming the queen of jhansi state so rajguru said yes your daughter 
she is not only a brave girl she is a gifted girl and she is a worth to be the queen of jhansi so that's all with this your chapter jhansi ki rani is completed i hope you liked the story about manu and you got inspiration that we should also feel proud to be the part of india where manu not only manu many freedom fighters fought for the freedom of our country the life we are living today it is gifted by them only and one of the contribution is given by, was given by manu with who was famous as jhansi ki rani with this i would like to end today's class have a nice day